This is the video demonstration on financial ratios. In this video, I'm going to work the solution to example number five. On this particular example, we actually have two different companies involved, the Carter Company and the Dalton Company. And we've been provided certain items of information about each one of these companies. Under the requirements, number one, for both companies, calculate the current ratio, acid test, working capital, accounts receivable turnover, inventory turnover, and profit margin. And number two, which company is the better credit risk? Now, when it comes to calculating financial ratios, the key to it is, firstly, you have to have the formula memorized. Secondly, you have to be able to calculate the formula. And third, and most important, you need to be able to interpret the answer. In other words, you need to be able to explain what that answer says about the company. Now, in this example, since we have two different companies, and we're going to do these ratios for both, it's almost like we're putting them into a head-to-head -head competition. And we'll be able to see which one comes out better in terms of their credit risk. Now, to do this one, I'm going to utilize Excel. And I've already set up a very simple uh, spreadsheet. I've got the Carter Company, I've got the Dalton Company, and I've listed all six of the different financial ratios that we're going to work with. And I'm going to leave the information here on the left-hand side and do the calculations here on the right-hand side so that way we don't have to keep flipping back and forth quite so much. And we're going to be anxious to see how this turns out. And like I said, these formulas, it's important to have these formulas memorized. Eventually you need to do that. The formulas are available in the book. They're also available in the video lecture on uh, financial ratios. But for this first ratio, this is current ratio. What's the formula? It is current assets divided by current liabilities. So for the Carter Company, I look at the Carter Company information. I see current assets, 300000 I see current liabilities, 115000 So 300000 divided by 115,000. That works out to about 2.61 rounded. Then I'll repeat that for the Dalton Company. So the Dalton Company current assets 321,000, current liabilities 101,000. So 321,000 divided by 101,000. That's about 3.18 rounded. So what do these answers mean about these two companies? Well, on current ratio, we always want to see an answer of at least one. And the higher the answer is, the better. And the way the answer is to be interpreted, for the Carter Company, for example, for every dollar that they owe in the current year, they potentially have $2.61 to cover it. Whereas the Dalton Company, for every dollar that they owe in the next year, they potentially have $3.18 to cover it. So overall, that's actually a pretty good solid current ratio for both companies, but we definitely would give the edge to Dalton on this one. And you know, sometimes it's not cut and dry. You know, sometimes it might be that Dalton Company wins out, sometimes Carter Company. It'll probably be a mixed bag, but we'll see all together based on all six taken as in context with each other, which company comes out on top. Now the second ratio will be the acid test. The acid test is very similar to current ratio. This is just a more strict version. The formula would be cash, plus short-term investments, plus receivables, divided by current liabilities. So for the Carter Company, cash, 50000 plus short-term investments, 75000 plus receivables, 100000 Then we have current liabilities, 115000 
And then we're going to take those assets together and divide those by the current liabilities to get rounded to the penny about 1.96. Then we'll do the same thing for the Dalton Company. So cash, 43000 plus short-term investments, 88000 plus receivables, 99000 Their current liabilities are 101000 So those assets divided by the current liabilities, about 2.28. Now the way this is interpreted is pretty much the same as current ratio, the acid test is a more strict version. And what's impressive about these answers is that really, with acid tests, since you're only using three particular assets, usually it's pretty tough to have an answer greater than one. And both of these companies do. Carter is $1.96, Dalton is 2.28. So really, they both have a pretty solid acid test. But again, definitely an advantage to Dalton. Theirs is a little bit higher. The next ratio is the working capital. Working capital is very simple. It's current assets minus current liabilities. So for Carter Company, assets current 300,000, current liabilities 115,000. So 300,000 minus 115,000, that's about 185,000. And then I'll do the same thing for Dalton. So current assets, 321,000, minus current liabilities, 101,000. That's about 220,000. Now working capital basically means how much money do you have to work with? How much do you have over and above the liabilities? Well, Carter has 185,000, Dalton has 220,000. So again, you know, both of them are in pretty solid shape, but definitely edge toward Dalton. The next ratio, accounts receivable turnover. Now this one is going to tell us how often the accounts receivable are replaced. Now what is the one thing that happens that causes our accounts receivable to be replaced? We collected the money. So that's why on accounts receivable turnover, we want this to be as high as possible. We want to have a good, strong, healthy turnover of accounts receivable. The higher that is, that means we're collecting the money faster. The formula would be net sales divided by average accounts receivable. So for Carter Company, net sales, 750000 now, accounts receivable, if you look down here, it says beginning accounts receivable, 110000 ending accounts receivable, 95000 Well, we want the average. So the way to get the average is to add those two together and divide by two. That'll give me an average. So I want the average of 110000 plus 95000 so the average there is 102,500. Now, what I'll do to get the answer, I'll take my net sales and I will divide my net sales by the average assets and I get about 7.32 for Carter Company. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the Dalton Company. Net sales, 650,000. Accounts receivable, it's 95 and 103. So 95,000, 103,000, average is 99,000, I will divide, I get about 6.57. So this tells me that in a year, the Carter Company turned over its receivables 7.32 times. The Dalton Company turned theirs over 6.57. Now this is where it gets interesting. This is the first time that Carter has actually beat Dalton. They actually have a slightly faster uh, turnover of receivables. That tells me that Carter Company is doing a little bit better job on collecting the money. Of course, you know, it's not entirely your, your company's fault. A lot of it is dependent upon the customers, but they are doing a better job of that. They do have a faster turnover on receivables. 
Now the next ratio is the inventory turnover. This is going to tell me how quickly I get rid of inventory. How do I get rid of inventory? I sell it. So again, we want this to be as high as possible. The formula would be the cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. So for Carter Company, cost of goods sold, 320000 Inventory is going to be an average. I've got 65000 and 63. So I want an average of the two. So that gives me the average. I'll take the cost of goods sold and divide it by that average. I get five for Carter Company. Then I'll repeat this calculation for Dalton Company. Cost of goods sold, 420000 Inventory looks like 77 and 71. So I'll take that cost of goods sold and divide that by the average inventory. I get about 5.68. So Carter Company turned over their inventory five times during the year. Dalton Company turned it over about 5.68. So a slight edge there to the Dalton Company. And then the next financial ratio is the profit margin. This is going to be net income divided by net sales. The answer that we get will be a decimal and we will convert it to a percentage. So in this case, for the Carter Company, net income, 210000 Net sales, 750000 So the net income divided by the net sales is about 0.28, which is the same thing as 28%. Then we'll do the same thing for Dalton. Net income, 245000 Sales, 650000 I'll take that net income and divide that, 0.38. So as a percentage, Carter Company made a profit of 28%. Dalton made a profit of 38%. So overall, you know, it was a little bit mixed, but on most of these, Dalton Company came out ahead. Now the question that they asked me on part two was which company was the better credit risk? So if I was going to lend money, I would tend to lend to Dalton Company. But really, to be honest, they both had such good answers, you'd probably feel comfortable lending to either one. But that's not what they asked, so the clear winner is, in this case, Dalton Company.